Hello listeners, I'm Tim Stradamus and this is Hump Day. Joining me as always is my talented and beautiful co-host, this voice. Good morning, Tim Stradamus, and welcome to all of our listeners. I think I have an interesting question for you here. Why did the student eat his homework? Well, I just broke the curse, so I think I'm going to go on a run here. Uh-oh. Because his dog left it out? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> because the teacher told him it was a piece of cake. What a lame joke. <laughs> because it was a piece of cake, he ate the paper. Well, let me go ahead and let our new listeners know what this channel is about. I read Am I the A-Hole Stories from Reddit. You and I, Timsterdamas, go ahead and review them together and give our perspectives. And in the end, we look forward to reading all of those comments of new perspectives that anyone else wants to share with us. Nice summer. Thank you. Well, we know what day it is, aside from it being hump day. It's hydration wednesday Mmm, water <laughs> so delicious it can be any flavor you imagine it to be truth i did that as a kid when i couldn't have soda or anything sweet i imagined it was <laughs> <laughs> imagination <laughs> <laughs> so don't forget to stay hydrated seriously it's too hot out there yep it still is very hot and while tim stradamus enjoys his water we can go ahead and delve into these stories bloop 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 if you're interested, that's supposed to be a swimming, by oh, the way. Okay. <laughs> if any listeners are interested in following along, all of the story links are in the description below. For a first story, am I the a-hole for kicking my brother out of my house because he refuses to stop calling my daughter fat? So I, 30 female, have a five-year-old daughter who is perfectly healthy and happy. She's a normal kid who loves playing and eating snacks now and then. Recently, my brother, 28 male, has been visiting often, and I've noticed he has taken to calling her chubby and fat as some kind of twisted joke. I thought he was just messing around at first, but it's gotten really out of hand. Every time he sees her, he makes comments like, whoa, easy there, big girl, or you can't have another cookie, you'll end up rolling out of here. It makes my blood boil. I've told him multiple times to stop but he always laughs it off like it's just harmless teasing. My daughter doesn't understand that it's supposed to be a joke, and I can see it hurting her feelings. Finally, after the last incident, where he shouted, looks like someone needs a diet, across the room while she was playing, I snapped. I kicked him out of my house and told him to never come back until he learned some respect. Now, my family is divided. My parents say I overreacted and that it was just sibling banter. Some of my friends are on my side, saying I did the right thing. But my brother is furious and is claiming I've ruined our relationship over a silly joke. So, am I the a-hole for kicking him out and telling him he can't come back unless he respects my daughter? He is right. He did ruin their relationship over a silly, jokey joke. Although those aren't jokes. That's just you being mean hiding behind only your laughter. You making a joke at someone else's expense is never a joke. And even if, let's say for sake of argument, him and his, I guess this would be his niece, had a, had a laugh. This was their inside joke with each other. Let's say for sake of argument, that's what this was. The mother, your sister, told you no. Unacceptable in her home with her child. That was a boundary that you repeatedly crossed over and over again. You deserved what you got. It wasn't a one-time infraction. And most people, I think, would let that slide like she did. Everyone's allowed to joke. But when you've been told, don't cross that line again, proceed at your own risk. That's what happened here. And now he's upset because he thinks you ruined their relationship. Come on with that. Your brother needs to learn uh, what respect and boundaries look like. So, OP, you're not the a-hole. The consensus on Reddit is our OP's not the a-hole. For Redditors, our OP was definitely within the rights to kick out someone who was clearly trying to bully their five-year-old daughter. And when a parent says, stop, you do just that and you stop. Aside from that, I also side with there's no such thing as joking on someone else's expense. No reason for it. I say there's tons of stand-up comedians. And if you want to be a stand-up comedian, do that. You also have the option to turn off the channel. But you know what a five-year-old doesn't have the option to do? To tell you to stop hurting her feelings. In her own home. But her, her mom does. Right? And yep. her mom did. Good on you, mom. Keep your boundaries. Now, let's go to our next story and see what you think about some behavior. 
Am I the a-hole for telling my sister that I don't want to be around her if she doesn't correct her son's behavior? I, 28 female, have two kids, six male and three male, with my husband, 28 male. My sister, Meredith, 32 female, and her husband, 32 male, also have two boys, Eugene, who is 13, and Atlas, who is 11. We just got back from a cruise with Meredith's family. We had several issues with Eugene's behavior on the cruise. Eugene is normally a pretty quiet kid. When we go over to Meredith's house, Eugene is normally in his room playing video games with friends, working on his robotics or science experiments, stuff like that. However, we saw his true colors on this cruise. The first problem we have was when Atlas wanted to show us the clothes he got for the cruise. Our family is white. Atlas's girlfriend is black. We live in a 90% plus white area. Atlas plays basketball and a lot of the TV shows he has watched have been about basketball. Currently, he wants to learn Mandarin and Korean to watch basketball sitcoms in other languages. Atlas's favorite basketball players and music artists are black. His favorite genre of music is rap and hip hop. His girlfriend has influenced his style choices. When he showed us his clothes, it was very clear his outfits come from black owned fashion businesses. Atlas has always been more influenced by black culture than what you'd expect for a kid who is wealthy and white. My husband and I have always felt conflicted on this and what is appropriation versus appreciation. And we don't feel like we can make a judgment on that as white people. The issue is Eugene made a comment about Atlas dressing like an N-word. When my husband and I expressed our shock at his statement, he doubled down and said he only said it because it's true and Atlas should stop dressing like an N-word if he didn't want to hear that. Meredith and her husband heard him say that, but didn't do anything. Later that night, I asked Meredith in private if they ever spoke to him about that comment. She said they did, but didn't want to ruin the mood. So when he defended himself, they didn't push back. I later spoke to Atlas in private, and he said that Eugene uses the N-word all the time, despite him getting upset over it. Another issue was Atlas was crying over a minor bruise he had got after he bumped into a table. He was playing with our oldest and running around. Eugene was also in the room and told Atlas to stop crying and that crying was for F-words. Again, Meredith and her husband did nothing. When I said something about watching our language, he said he said nothing wrong. The last major problem we had was at dinner one night. We had a server who was visibly some type of Asian. Eugene made a joke about how we're probably going to get dog meat from his server. I told Eugene to cut it out and he rolled his eyes at me. We got back from the cruise on Friday morning and were back home by Friday evening. We went to Meredith's for dinner on Friday night. Atlas had his girlfriend over and I could see he was trying to avoid Eugene whenever he came near him. Once his girlfriend left, I decided to speak to Atlas in private. Atlas told me that his brother always makes offensive jokes. His parents have discussed taking him to therapy, but he refuses to go because he says therapy is for F words. I went to speak to Eugene. He had two friends over. All three of the boys said Eugene did nothing wrong and doubled down on their behavior. One of his friends suggested I was on my period because I was getting too offended. And Eugene said I was proving why women shouldn't be in politics. After all this, I went to Meredith and told her that if Eugene's behavior didn't change, that I do not want my family to be around her as I think he would be a bad influence on my sons. She said I was being too harsh and that he would grow out of being edgy. She said she tried therapy, but he rejected it, and she isn't going to force him to go and strain their relationship. She said I was overstepping my boundaries. Am I the a-hole? What the spice of me to be? Yikes. Uh, there's a lot of words in this story that are just not acceptable. We have a family that's 100% within its rights to not have any time spent with uh, their cousins. I guess that's what we're saying here at the end of the day is, is she wrong for... Not wanting her kids around the bad influence that is Eugene. Correct. No, you're not wrong. If someone is displaying their values, don't look past that. They're telling you who they are. 
your words do impact how people think about you. If you're saying racist and intolerant things, that's what you are. <laughs> racist and intolerant. I don't want to have my children around you. That's an easy answer. The worst part is she has to come to the internet to even ask if she's wrong for making sure that she protects her kids from foul viewpoints and values. No, never feel wrong. No matter what, you are the parent. You get to decide who your children get to spend time with at a certain age. Because we're talking about the kids are six, something like that. They're very young. Her kids are six and three. Yeah, that's very impressionable. They're here, they're older cousins. And no matter who you are, the youngest will always look up to the oldest. That's just how life works in a lot of circumstances. I would be very cautious around my kids spending any time with someone like that. I don't care if the kid's 13. Correct. It doesn't sound like this is a phase. I think Eugene probably has been spending too much time on the internet alone um, and has been picking terrible friends to be around. Uh, you're no better than the company you keep. And it sounds like they have also reinforced his beliefs because you could hear it when she was trying to confront him. Now, should it be up to the aunt to have to do that? No, because it, you can definitely tell by Eugene's lack of understanding and empathy and towards respect. Yeah. Anything that ROP had to say to him means he doesn't respect her. And it kind of sounds like he doesn't respect anyone else in that home. If you're going to cultivate that type of environment where he is allowed to be that way, don't be surprised by the outcomes. He's a 13 year old. Get prepared because if you're allowing this to keep going, it's only going to get worse. I guess this is what happens when you let the internet raise your kids. I'm not saying that that's what these parents are doing, but what I am saying is it's a little odd that Atlas is completely different, doesn't have these values, but his brother is, again, it sounds like he's drinking that Kool-Aid. So in my opinion, OP, you're definitely not the a-hole. Protect your kids. So the consensus on Reddit is our OP is not the a-hole. In fact, wow, OP should definitely not be around her sister's family if they can't correct this disgusting behavior. Seriously, I really hope it's rage bait because if you have an individual that is this unhinged, um, that's a nice way to put it. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people that enjoy edgy jokes. That's not edgy. All you're being is just disrespectful to everyone around you. And the fact that he would have two friends that would be like that, I side with you, Tim Stradamus. He's made really bad friends and it's influenced him to go online to see all of these 4chan type places to where he thinks it's okay for him to be racist because that's all he is. The fact that the parents, Eugene's parents, would say that he'll grow out of this edgy behavior. Ooh, that makes me want to gnash my teeth. That is being an asshole is not being edgy. You're just being an asshole. Well, let's go ahead and walk away from this one because it, it still steams me up even right now. And let's go to another one that might steam people up instead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for our next story. Am I the a-hole for calling my stepsister a murderer after she kept calling abortion murder? I, 23 female, am pro-choice. My older stepsister, Jane, 29 female, is very pro-life and often refers to abortion as murder. She's married to John, 32 male, who is also quite religious and against abortion. Jane and John follow very strict Christian values and are vocal about it. My parents, dad and stepmom, who raised me since I was four, are pro-choice when it comes to cases of rape, incest, and the life of the mother, as well as supporting DNCs for non-abortive purposes. On Sunday, yesterday, we were having a family brunch after we had gone to church. My parents and I are Presbyterian, and Jane and John are Baptist. When the topic of abortion came up because Jane and John's pastor brought it up, Jane started her usual speech about how abortion is murder and how anyone who supports it is going against Christian values. I've heard this countless times, and I usually try to stay out of it to keep the peace, as do my parents. This time, though, she specifically called me out, saying I'm a disgrace to our family and to God because of my pro-choice views. She went on and on about how I'm not living according to Christian values and how disappointed she is in me, revealing I had an abortion in high school. I had a uterine fistula removed via DNC when I was 17, saying I should repent for my sin. I was tired of her holier-than-thou attitude and the constant judgment, but revealing my medical history to her husband was the last straw for me. So, in the heat of the moment, I snapped and said, at least I'm not a murderer by your standard, but you are. 
referring to the fact that Jane had an abortion in college, which she had confided in me a few years ago when she was drunk. Jane's face went white, and John looked shocked. He had no idea about the abortion. Jane stormed out of the room, and John followed, demanding answers. Now, the whole family is upset with me for exposing Jane's secret and causing a huge rift in their marriage. Jane is furious and won't speak to me. My parents are disappointed, and John is devastated. I feel bad for how things turned out, but I'm also angry that Jane keeps shaming me for my beliefs when she hasn't been honest about her past and was acting like a huge hypocrite. Am I the a-hole? Hope he found a bigger rock to throw. <laughs> <laughs> You messed with the wrong one on the wrong day. You know, what's funny is it sounds like Jane is the one that was doing the holier than thou, right? Jane is the sister. I have found throughout my lifetime, normally when people are pushing their beliefs and starting to judge and chastise people around them, normally they are the people that have committed the things that they're judging other people on. Now, that's not every case. But in my experience, normally when they're starting to attack others, it's because they're trying to compensate or make themselves feel better about the things that they have done in their lives. Again, not in every case, but it sounds like that was this one. You're willing to throw other people under the bus about medical history that has nothing to do with you. Or to really do with abortion. Because the thing is, that had nothing to do with a fetus being aborted. It just had to do with a procedure that was just down there. And yes, it uses the same type of tools, but it was for a totally different purpose that had nothing to do with a life being lost. You're allowed to have the values you want. I don't care which side of the aisle you land on being life or choice. doesn't matter to me. Uh, But what does matter to me is when people force their viewpoint on others. To sit there at a family dinner, is this what's happening right now? She's just going off. It was a family brunch after church. What do you get from making other people feel ashamed? I don't know. It's a interesting way to go about living life, but Jane got hers. I think when she said it, Jane like goes white and runs out. <laughs> and then the husband's like, oh no, Jane. <laughs> well, he's shocked apparently. He wants to know more about this because this is his first time hearing it. Stop living in a glass house. Just appreciate people for who they are. If you're spending time with your family, why can't that just be what that is? I think your sister needs to go get into some form of therapy because this might be her way of coping with what she had done. And maybe she is feeling shame and hurt over that. I mean, that's not a healthy outlet. I can understand regretting things that you do, but taking it out on others the way Jane did is never the right way. So hopefully she gets the help. It is fun to see when people get dunked on and have their own medicine uh, thrown at them. But uh, when you can see what's happened... She sounds like she's going through some stuff and she might need the help too. So OP, you're definitely not the a-hole. The consensus on Reddit is our OP's not the a-hole. In fact, many Redditors were happy that OP clapped back. They said, look, your stepsister essentially put on blast your private medical history. And on top of that, try to accuse you of something that didn't even have anything to do with what she was shaming you for. Instead, you threw that rock right back. And man, no, that rock got bigger. <laughs> she found a different one. <laughs> it just kept growing as it kept flying through the air. <laughs> but regardless, you should not throw stones unless you are prepared for those consequences. And man, our OP said, Look, today I'm your consequence. So honestly, whatever's happening with the marriage of Jane and her husband, John, that's all on them. I have to put it this way. If you have some deep, dark secret, you really should be telling the person that you're marrying because you're saying that you trust them and you love them to spend the rest of your life with them through thick and thin, right? Those are what those vows are for. Why would you not go in and at least tell each other everything that has happened? I think that goes back to how Jane needs to go get help. Because if she's at that point where she couldn't have shared that with someone she's supposed to be very close with, I'm telling you, there's some underlining there that she needs to go get help for. No, I do wish them the best, but I think Jane got what she deserved. She might have. I can still feel for her as far as the mental game that's been playing in her head, it sounds. I can understand that, but not at the expense of others. Very true. In the meantime, damn, OP. Just damn. damn. (laughs) (laughs) Well... Let's go to our very last story and see what you think about those doggy bags that you like to take with us whenever we walk the girls. 
Oh, those aren't doggy bags. They're poop bags. They are poop bags. They're poop doggy bags. For our last story. Today, I fucked up by using scented dog waste bags. Obligatory. This didn't happen today. I mean, technically, the fuck up was made back at the start of the year. I only realized my fuck up a couple of weeks ago. As you may have gathered from the title, I have a dog, a beautiful husky named Ripley, after Ellen Ripley from the Alien franchise because they're both sassy badasses. Back in February, I was putting through the usual order of rolls of waste disposal bags when the site suggested their vanilla scented bags. I thought, I love vanilla. Sure, let's go for it. I've been using these bags for six months and have no complaints about their quality or anything else. Now, here's where the fuck up comes in. I love vanilla. I often use vanilla scented things around my home and on myself, including a particularly strong vanilla body mist, which evidently I haven't used for a while. A couple of weeks ago, my husband and I go for a nice little dinner date at our favorite place and sit outside in the covered booths as we normally do. I keep getting a whiff of something sweet, but all I can think is, ugh, something smells like dog do. I keep checking my shoes, looking around the floor, and I cannot find any. A wave of realization washes over me, and I put my nose to my skin. Yep, my vanilla body mist now makes me think of dog do. I've switched the bags to unscented and relegated all vanilla things to the back of the cupboard until such a time as I can smell vanilla without thinking of dog mess. The too long don't read used vanilla scented waste bags. Now my vanilla body spray makes me think of dog mess. No, <laughs> no, your brain did the association thing. Yeah. Oh no. It now associates the smell of vanilla with dog poo. Oh, how terrible. I can sympathize because I love, I'm a sucker for anything and everything vanilla. You are. The smell, the taste, it, it's my favorite. I know we've had that happen a couple times where you may have bought something and you love it as far as the scent is concerned or the taste. And then it ends up for some reason pushing you off of it for a while just because it, you maybe have gone too overboard between that or the thing that I can't stand. And remember, I think you'll be reminded of this. Remember how we had the garbage bags and how they have that certain smell to it? Yeah. And we put our bread above that. Oh, the, yeah. The container of where we just have the bags, right? Oh, I remember and that. for whatever reason, the smell of those garbage bags permeated into the, the sandwich bread. bread. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. But you and I kept taking it out. And we're like, oh, my God, this smells like garbage. It smells like the scented garbage bags before the garbage goes into it. But you and I could not disassociate that smell. And since it got in the bread, it was so awful. We had to throw that loaf away because there we was just not. no way we were eating it. We it was so not. strong. Oh. I think our latest mistake now is when we got those lifesavers. And I feel like it's permeating into our cupboard and we're going to have to find somewhere else to put that because I cannot stand it now. The listeners need to understand this. When Voice First got pregnant, she really liked Lifesavers. I was, liked it because it controlled the nausea. The nausea, yeah. So we went out and bought huge bags for her, like big five pound bags. And because nausea was so bad, there needed to be a bag on hand upstairs and downstairs. So we had two of these bags open. Now, with anything in life, you should definitely check the ingredients. We did not, so that's on us. But as soon as we realized, what was inside of these lifesavers, voice immediately stopped uh, enjoying them. It's because it's not good for you when you're pregnant. Thank goodness we didn't get too far into that. Um, but we ended up putting both the big bags that are open still in our small closet in the kitchen. And now the entire closet we found smells like lifesavers. We just can't seem to learn. <laughs> <laughs> we should have just bagged them in Ziploc baggies, but, uh, you know. I'm we just all... thinking of donating them. Maybe I can take a bunch to work. We got a lot of candy to hand out for Halloween. We're not handing out lifesavers. <laughs> we to can be those, those neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> After you have the candy, enjoy some lifesavers. No, stick your hand in real deep. 
<laughs> it's just lifesavers. This house sucks. <laughs> That's too funny. It's not even, it's the, what is it? The winter green lifesavers. Yeah. It's not like the the fruity, like gummy lifesavers that you can enjoy for Halloween. We're going to be that house on the block. Oh, God. Lifesavers ahoy. Please no. Yes. I'll dress up as a lifesaver uh, villain. <laughs> just around <laughs> throwing candy at kids. That'd be so funny. So was that our last story? Not quite. It's not a story, but I forgot to give you the dog tax on that last story. I love the dog tax. What a beautiful husky. And as they said, its name is Ripley. Very cool. Very beautiful dog. I love those eyes. Quite lovely. What a great story to end off on. Yes. Well, as our stories come to a close, don't forget, you've seen the world what you carry in your heart. If you've enjoyed listening to us read and talk about today's stories, please rate, subscribe, and turn on notifications for new content. We regularly post on Mondays and Wednesdays. And on Fridays, we have our Domus After Dark episodes where we go balls to the wall. Nice. <laughs> I was you. I was like, are you saying balls deep? <laughs> we're not that chill. <laughs> no, we're, we just go a little crazy with finding interesting scenarios, I think. We do hit those balls hard. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> the most legendary thing ever said in a movie. Dodge ball. <laughs> and... We would love to thank all of our Teetreons for your continued support. Yes, we love and appreciate every single one of you. Mwah. And as always, listeners, we look forward to hearing your opinions in the comments below. What did you think about the stories today? I thought they were pretty fun. Were they, though? Angering fun. There it is. <laughs> There's a couple that even got you ready. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yes. That second one. Sometimes when Voice does get a little upset, I can tell when she's reading these stories because she'll ball her fist up like Arthur. Which ones make you ball your fists? Jane, probably. Oh, that really got you? Yeah. Understood. Don't throw rocks. I just hope she gets the help she needs so she can stop making other people feel bad for the decisions that she made a long time ago. That's very true. And remember, if you post it, maybe you can dodge a wrench too. 